All right, Chuck, please take it away. Excellent, thank you, Mary. Uh, this is this is a really interesting topic because many times spray nozzles are treated as an afterthought or not as important. And in some ways it's understandable. With, uh, with major complexes like a refinery, you must deal with very large, complex and expensive pieces of equipment. So it's easy to lose sight of where the spray nozzle fits in and how critical to the overall success and efficiency of the unit it's in. Today, we will introduce a situation where a great deal of thought and research were put into an innovative design that has the potential to play an even bigger role in the refinery process. Well, first off, for, for those of you that are not familiar with Spraying Systems Company, uh, we are a, a global spray technology company. Our corporate headquarters is located outside of Chicago, Illinois, and we do many different things, but some of the things that are probably more interesting to the people in this group are that we design and manufacture spray nozzles, injectors, quills, headers, this type of thing. We also have a group that's uh, the Spray Analysis and Research Services Group, of which Kathleen Brown is part of. And some of the many different things that they do are things such as the computational fluid dynamics, spray characterization, prototyping, testing, and this type of thing. Next, I will be giving some general background and explain where we are, why we're here, why we're talking about this. And then I'll talk specifically about water wash and hydro processing units. This is, a, this is a fairly short presentation and we'll be giving it as an overview. So I do urge you to ask questions if you have any. And although the application I'll discuss is specific, the ideas can be used for almost any spray nozzle application in the oil and gas industry. It comes down to something my father told me years ago, always use, always use the right tool for the job. We mentioned innovation and sustainability in the first slide. So I figured it would be a good idea to kind of get a, some definitions going so we're all thinking about the same thing. Innovation is fairly easy. It means new methods, new ideas or processes. But many people have different ideas of what sustainability means to them. I would suggest for this presentation, we see sustainability as making responsible decisions that will positively impact our environment today and tomorrow. So that means less waste less environmental impact. And specifically for spray nozzles and refineries, it means reducing corrosion and increasing reliability. Spray performance is critical, especially for water wash applications. And how effectively we can produce a spray pattern depends on many different factors. It depends on such things as the type of spray nozzle that you're using. Is it a full cone nozzle, a hollow cone nozzle, a two fluid nozzle, or even a quill? It depends on the capacity of the spray nozzle. So a higher flow rate spray nozzle at the same pressure drop as a lower flow rate spray nozzle, the higher flow rate spray nozzle will have larger droplets. It depends on the pressure. The higher the pressure, the droplet size goes down. It depends on the spray, uh, the spray pattern width. A, high, a wider spray pattern will typically have smaller droplets. And as you can imagine, it depends on the rheology of the fluid you're spraying, density, viscosity, surface tension, all of these different factors play a role in how those drops, droplet sizes are produced. We found that although many advancements have been made over the years in various refinery processes and equipment, injection point technology has not kept up with those improvements. So the challenge we're faced with today is we need to develop innovative new designs based on technical advance and advancements and sound engineering principles because the more efficient and effective we can do with these injection points, the less overall waste there is, which means we become more sustainable. With most injection applications, creating and controlling the drop size of the spray is very important. As we can see here, if you can create smaller droplets, you can increase the surface area of the sprayed liquid, which can then increase the efficiency of the application. And since mass transfer is proportional to the droplet surface area, it's easy to see how powerful the spray nozzle can be. So for any application where you require surface area, whether it's evaporation or combustion or a chemical reaction, and you need to create more surface area for that, the spray nozzle is something that needs to be used. Various spray nozzles that are used in different applications in the refinery are such things such as a full cone nozzle, hollow cone, and two fluid spray nozzle. The full cone nozzle and the hollow cone nozzle are what we refer to as a hydraulic spray nozzle. 
and they use a single liquid with a fixed orifice. And that fixed orifice creates back pressure, which determines our flow versus pressure relationship and also determines the spray pattern that is formed, as you can see here, the full cone or the holocone spray pattern, as well as the droplets formed. With a two fluid spray nozzle, we have a secondary fluid that's used. It's usually some type of gas. Today, we will see how hydrogen can play a big role. When talking about injection point technology, NACE paper 34101 makes a distinction of various types and each has its own performance characteristics and efficiencies. For instance, T's are typically discouraged against, while two fluid spray injectors are at the cutting edge of new designs. Quills are simply pipes with open ends or holes, and spray injectors have spray nozzles attached. In this video, we're going to take a look at the performance differences between a quill and a spray injector. On the top two frames, you see a two-hold quill. On the bottom two frames, you see a two-spray nozzle spray injector. All four are spraying the same amount of liquid. The left two frames show these in installed inside of a wind tunnel with the gas in the wind tunnel operating at 20 meters per second. The right two frames, we have the gas in that same wind tunnel increased to 30, 30 meters per second. And the reason we're showing this is because in order for the quill to be effective, since the liquid that exits the quill is coming out in a ligament, in order for it to be effective, we require secondary shear due to that velocity of the gas stream in order to produce the droplets. So in this particular test, at the end of the wind tunnel, we had we did we took some drop size character, characterization, meaning we measured the droplets that were being produced. And when we increased the velocity from 20 meters per second, to 30 meters per second, we did not see a noticeable change in the droplets that were produced. 20 meters per second, 30 meters per second is a fairly typical velocity in an overhead system such as an atmospheric crude tower. Uh, the quills can be used in sub such applications such as liquid to liquid injection, or if the velocity is much higher than this, or if the liquid injected is much lower than this. But what we found here was that the quills themselves do not ac actually operate as intended. Now we're going to look at water wash and hydro processing units. This whole project started with a uh, started with Floor Engineering Corporation in Aliso Viejo, California. They had done some research and produced a paper about single versus multiple injection points for REACT wash water systems. For those of you that have access, I suggest that you read their NACE paper number 7202 for more information. But in it, they were talking about the water wash requirements being the need to evaporate and water saturate the effluent vapor in order to scrub hydrogen chloride and ammonia. REACTs have been a safety and reliability problem due to ammonium salt corrosion. And wash water has been injected to avoid salt deposition or corrosion, but not always successfully. As you can see here, although the piping system itself may be balanced, liquid flow bias occurs due to centrifugal force induced by the various T's and elbows. The water wants to follow the path of least resistance. So it's reasonable to conclude and can be seen with computation of fluid dynamics modeling that free water and hydrocarbon liquid will not distribute evenly to re each REACT bundle. Most process models that are used to calculate the wash water rate assume that equilibrium occurs instantaneously and the vapor phase is water saturated. However, this does not happen as designed. The wash water needs to evaporate through direct heat transfer. So temperature differential and surface area of the wash water are key parameters. The one variable we have control over is the wash water surface area that we create. In this video, we're gonna look at three different injection point technologies. On the left, we have a quill. In the center, we have a full jet full cone spray nozzle. And on the right, we have a Flomax H, hydrogen atomized two fluid spray nozzle. All three are flowing approximately 45 gallons per minute, so we can compare them side by side. If we look at the quill, you see this dense region, this dense white region here. And this is what we refer to as the ligament. So we're not actually getting instantaneous droplet breakup. Once again, referring back to the video I showed before, we're relying on the velocity of the gas in order to do this for us. And we see a very unstable spray. 
which means that our performance will change. The full cone nozzle in the center, we're now starting to be able to see discrete droplets formed. However, these droplets are still very large. On the right-hand side, with the Flomex H2 fluid spray nozzle, it has a much softer appearance. And that's because these droplets are much, much smaller. The larger droplets and ligaments from the quill and the full cone nozzle tend to form a layer on the pipe walls and inhibit heat transfer with the effluent vapor. And liquid, mal liquid maldistribution then occurs. But when it does, so does vapor maldistribution, but less dramatically since, since the vapor is the volumetrically dominated phase. The smaller droplets created by the two fluid spray nozzle promote evaporation and promote water saturation of the vapor phase and scrubbing of hydrogen chloride, both of which mitigate salt deposition concerns. With a well-designed injection system, equilibrium is more closely approached and the vapor phase becomes more water saturated, leading to more even distribution of the wash water into the REACT bundles. With this newly designed Flomax H hydrogen atomized two fluid spray nozzle, a slip stream of hydrogen gas can be used as the atomization gas, which can increase scrubbing efficiency and reduce reliability problems. In this image right here, we're showing a computational fluid dynamics model setup. So we're taking the three different injection point technologies that we showed in the video previously, and we're putting them into this model of a hydro treater. And all of these are the different inputs into that model. On the bottom of the screen, you see a red arrow. This represents the hydrocarbon gas as it's approaching and going into the vertical pipe stand. The blue arrow is where the three different injection points will be looked at. The four green arrows represent four different viewpoints we'll take a look at through our video. We're gonna look at where the injection point is, and then the first T, the second T, and then we'll finally look at the first six inlets into the REACT bundle. It's important to note that in this simulation, we're more focused on comparing various injection point technologies and highlighting the differences than we are at trying to solve a problem in a specific hydro treater. The video that I'm going to show, there's gonna be a lot of things going on, but what I want you to keep in mind is that when we go to each of the four different viewpoints represented by the green arrows, we'll be looking at gas streamlines, we'll be looking at particle tracking of the spray droplets, we'll be looking at the liquid water distribution, water vapor formed, and the gas temperature. So the piping system layout we showed you before, this is the same one, but we have them layered with three different ones so that we can compare each injection point technology to the other side by side. Here we see the gas streamlines as it's going through the pipe. The quill will always be on your left, the full cone nozzle in the center, and then the Flomax H2 fluid nozzle on the right. And we'll show the video once again, just to remind you of what these look like. One important thing to note is whenever doing a computational fluid dynamics model with spray nozzles, it's extremely important to use actual nozzle data in the model itself and not use averages. These particular nozzles were, we had drop size characterization done. So we know the drop size span, we know the velocity, and we know the trajectory of all of these droplets. And then they, that, that information then gets fed into the model itself. Right here, we see particle tracking, which is showing the drop sizes formed. The darker blue on the right represents smaller droplets from the two fluid nozzle, as we would expect. Right here, we're looking at the liquid water and the full cone and the two fluid nozzle look fairly similar right here. However, when we take a look at the water vapor formed, the blue in the right-hand side shows us that the two fluid nozzle instantaneously creates more water vapor as soon as it leaves the spray nozzle which then gives us a resulting decrease in gas temperature immediately. Now we're going to move to the first T. So we're watching our gas streamlines as it goes through the piping system. We have our particle tracking right here. And now we're able to look at the, at the liquid water formed and we see right here with the quill and the full cone nozzle, now we're starting to see that maldistribution because of the momentum of the water going through the system. The darker blue on the foreground means that we have more water vapor formed from the two fluid nozzle. And as you could expect, the reduction in gas temperature. 
gas streamlines are taking us to the next T. We show the particle tracking. Our liquid water still, we're continually getting maldistribution because of those T's and because of the momentum of the water. The Flomax H2 fluid nozzle continues to have more water vapor, which means that we have better distribution because of that. And then, of course, the gas temperature reduction. And then lastly, we're going to go to the first six inlets to the REACT bundle. By looking at the, by looking at the liquid water, we're still seeing more liquid maldistribution. and our water vapor is more uniformly distributed. We have more water vapor uh, being formed, which is what we're showing right here, and then the resulting gas temperature. Now we're gonna look at a few bar graphs showing the results of this. So we saw, we saw the video, and on our x-axis, we have the 24 inlets to our REACT bundle. The piping system at the top here gives us an idea of where each of those are located. In the video, we only looked at the first six inlets, but this shows all 24 of them. So the liquid mass flow rate distribution, now we can see where more of the liquid is going to the outside portions because of the momentum of the water as we had seen. The quill has much worse maldistribution and the hydraulic nozzle and then the Flomax H had much better distribution because we have more water vapor formed. Since the gas distributes more uniformly than the liquid, you can see with the gray bars from the Flomax H2 fluid nozzle that the FMH with a higher vapor saturation level can distribute more of the water wash more uniformly. Here we see the respective temperature profiles of the various inlets. If temperature is a critical design component for you, this is another parameter that can be optimized. Some customers are simply want to see the water distribution, and then some customers want to see the temperature, the, res the resulting temperature of each of their inlets. So depending on what you want to look at, the computational fluid dynamic model can show that for you. In review, we described how wash water maldistribution occurs and the consequences of increased corrosion. Then, in order to achieve a more uniform wash water distribution, it's much more efficient to do this by water saturating the process gas stream, and this is simply not accomplished with conventional means. And finally, by using an innovative design of a FMH hydrogen atomized two fluid design, the optimal drop size and amount of surface area can be produced for effective scrubbing. There's still more work to do. We need to conduct the test at a refinery and have had conversations with a couple who continually have the same corrosion problems over and over again. If anyone wants to be a part of this study, please do let us know. Other than that, hopefully with the videos we've shown and with the informa information presented, you can see how improved spray performance through innovative designs can result in better efficiency, which then means less waste, less corrosion, more reliability, for a more sustainable solution. With that, I'd like to say thank you for your time and I'd be open for any questions you may have. Hey Chuck, yep, we've got a couple questions here. Um, Kevin would like to know, how were the CFD results we showed verified? The, uh, the results themselves were not verified on site. The, 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 ver the verification process was done through our, through our modeling techniques. Kathleen might have a better idea about how, I think, I think you wanna know how we, how we come to grips with, with whether the information we're showing is accurate or not. Um, yeah, let me uh, just briefly touch on that. Um, we have a wind tunnel set up and I think Chuck maybe showed part of it with quills versus a, a dual nozzle system. Um, and we use that wind tunnel to verify performance of drop size velocity and downstream volumetric distribution. Um, so we were able to verify uh, a lot of the uh, performance characteristics um, quantitatively in our wind tunnel. Awesome. Kevin, let me know if you have any follow-up questions after that. Um, 
we have another question. What software do you use for CFD simulation? Um, we use ANSYS uh, Fluent Solvers. Um, right now we're using 2020R2 for this particular simulation. Um, well, in general, those are what we use. Great. I have Mary, a, I wanna... another. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jack. Yeah, I'm sorry. Now, I, could, I wasn't able to see the chat before, and I see the comments that are being made right here. And Jimmy is absolutely correct. I mean, so one of the one of the other ways that you can validate is doing exactly what he says, is taking thermal pictures and x-rays. And you can see actually what's happening inside the pipe to verify that. Um, so in addition to what Kathleen had described before, there are other means that can be done on site to verify that this is done. So just I just wanted to highlight that. Thank you, uh, Jimmy, for making those comments. Awesome. I have uh, another question here sent through the private chat. Are you still able to maintain 20 to 25 percent free water? Yeah, thank you. That That's actually a, an excellent question. And so the reason I said that we're not actually modeling uh, a specific or trying to solve a problem here is that uh, we are looking at this particular model, we are looking at the performance differences. And in this one, there was not 20 to 25 percent free water left over. However, by changing the by changing some of the parameters of the spray nozzle, we can do that, and that's that's where we can optimize a particular solution. So, uh, so being able to change the inputs of the nozzle, the pressures, the atomization that's required, then we can change it so that you are able to have twenty to twenty five percent free water left over. Yeah, great. Thanks, Chuck. Um, how did you validate your spray nozzle design with hydrogen? Uh, well, in order to ensure the spray nozzle design operated as expected with hydrogen, and also to understand how to collect drop size, we tested with helium since it was the, the safest gas that was most similar to hydrogen. We're not actually able to, to spray the hydrogen on our labs. But, uh, but anyway, we compared that performance to other various gases, and then we're able to make the necessary conversions for hydrogen performance. Uh, it, it was a very important part of the, the design process, uh, not only to validate the, validate the design modifications of the spray nozzle, but also to validate the test results. Awesome, great. Um, Looks like one last question for me, unless people, you know, keep going in the chat and Q&A if you'd like. Is this technology used any other place in the refinery? Uh, yes, similar, similar types of applications use this. Uh, for instance, well, the, no, other, no other area of the plant uses a hydrogen atomized nozzle. That's, that's new, but other, other applications use two fluid nozzles for various things. Uh, this can be seen in, you can, some people use it in steam desuperheating. Uh, a, a very typical two fluid design in a plant would be a torch oil or a, a fresh feed injector in FCC unit. And also in an atmospheric crude tower overhead, uh, there is an application called uh, neutralizing amine injection, where they meter in the amine into a live steam line and it goes through a quill. And we also designed a specific spray nozzle to enhance the spray of that so that the amine volatilizes much more quickly and that you get much much more efficient uh, scrubbing of the chlorides. So yeah, the, the similar type technologies are used elsewhere in refineries. All right, great. Um, Kevin has another follow-up question. Um, what percent of water by mass did you inject for the study? Uh, I'll look that up for you right here. That was uh, 2.9 kilograms per second of water injected. Uh, this particular this particular model that we did uh, re actually required much much more water, as you can expect, because we because we did not have the free water left over. Um, so in this particular one, it's only 2.9 kilograms per second. Nice, perfect. Kevin, let us know if you have any follow-ups after that. Um, Jimmy does have a question too. Um, a single injection point versus multiple injection points at headers. Yeah, and that's a that's a really good question. And the the paper, the the NACE paper seven two zero two that I referenced before, that was done by Floor 
Engineering Corporation, they actually address that. Um, and it's beyond the scope of what we're doing here. Uh, I uh, really suggest that you read that paper because they go into talking about the severity of the unit and actually the problems that you have. And so they, they kind of bracket it to, if this is happening, then you should probably get, you could get by with one injection point. If this is happening, you probably should have multiple injection points. And then if this is happening, you should probably use a combination of the two. Uh, and they, they, they really break it down to the severity of the corrosion that you're, that you're seeing in the unit and the severity of the, the chlorides being formed in the unit. What we're really, what we're really focusing on is, is the, the ability to get the wash water where it needs to be. That's great. Thanks, Chuck. Um, I did put a link there too. Um, you can purchase the paper as much as we would love to give it to you. It is highly illegal and frowned upon. So um, just go ahead and if you'd like to read more, uh, you can purchase the paper with that link. All right. If we're all good on questions, then I'd like to thank everyone for your time. If you have any questions following today's talk or if you watch the rerun and you know you have some questions afterwards, please reach out to me. Uh, my email is mary, M-A-R-Y dot keo, K-E-O-U-G-H at spray.com. I'll put that in the chat too. Um, I'll forward all your emails to the appropriate person, either Chuck, Kathleen, um, maybe they can forward you to somebody else if it's a more advanced question. Um, you can also follow Spraying Systems Company on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more updates. Um, have a great day, everyone, okay. and thanks for coming. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Kathleen. Hey, you're welcome. Y'all take care.